Well, I think there's a lot of parallels between what I've done in motorsport and, on, and in the film industry, um, working in stunts um, with with mainstream business. Um, and some of them are the, are the most obvious and fundamental, which is um, working with the best people you can. Um, and I suppose a lot of my, my experiences over the years showcase, um, you know, highly skilled people working together as a team. Um, so they are a bit of a cliche talking about teamwork and and using the right people for the right job. But in my world, it's it's so fundamental and so core um, that you end up, you know, with, with these great examples of people working in special effects that work on the cannons that help the cars flip over um, so that we land on the right mark. Um, pairing that with with people who are, you know, working against the flow of traffic on their bikes in cars, people like me um, who are sliding and, and activating these quite complicated pieces of technology all at the same time. So it's such a collaboration. I think it really showcases that in a, in a fun way uh, for businesses that are, that are bringing teams together from different you know, international um, groups of people working together from different experiences. So I think um, the stunt side really showcases that um, with, with the racing, you know, there's a unity of purpose. We're all we're all there to win. That's that's obvious, you know, in, in the same way that businesses are there to succeed. Um, and I guess um, one of the things that's that I've learned over the years is that you you gain performance everywhere, not in just one area. Um, you know, you can you, you might be looking for some very small piece of time on a you know on a lap time. Maybe it's half a second or something. Um, the mistake is to try and find that half second in one corner. So you it's usually small pieces everywhere, um, not just across the lap. So it's human performance, you know, personal development, how I achieve those things using all sorts of wonderful um, mental skills, visualization, and um, where, the way we rehearse things and the way we plan ahead of time. It's, you know, it's weeks or months building up to the main event where you then deliver the maximum performance. So there's a lot of preparation that goes into that. And I think that also is a, is a, is a skill set that works with businesses. Um, but it's also collaborating again across the board with, with all the technology side that, that feeds into it. So the engineering that we bring, um, a lot of the a lot of, a lot of the the lap time is is bought and paid for over the winter, you know, before the season begins. So it's it's a continuous sort of evolution that gets the that gets the performance um, again working together. So I think it's those two things in unison. So it's collaboration across different skill sets um, and about how you how you search for it, um, you know, in in every area. So in the movie making process, um, my whole job is risk management. Actually, I would argue the same is true on the track. You know, to, there's an adage that says to finish first, you first have to finish. I learned very much the hard way um, that not finishing was a problem. Um, you know, going for a move that was risky, too risky, having a collision um, and oh, I nearly made it, but nearly made it doesn't count. So you you do have to learn to um, do what we call in the movie making world, dynamic risk assessments. In the, in the racing world, it's just, you know, you, you rely quite a lot on experience to sort of see what, what is high risk and whether it's worth it or not. And there are times when you do have to to take the plunge and, and try and pull a move. So certainly motorsport, you know, in the, in the saddle. But with the movie making, um, you know, the entire department of stunts, that's what we're there to do. Um, one of the best ways to mitigate risk is, again, using the best people for the job um, because they're going to have the experience, the ability, the, the innate um, instincts that you want to make the right decisions at the right time. Um, and something that I talk about and showcase through through the uh, particularly in the Bond movies that I've worked on. But, you know, all of the films I've, I've been involved with is how we deliver that and, um, and how specific you are in the rehearsal times um, to, to pick out things. I think businesses are the same. You can basically make your mistakes behind closed doors um, more gently than when it's when it really counts. And I think that's the way to do it. So um, it, it, usually it's, a lot of it's down to forward planning, but having enough experience in the team to be able to react um, and react in the right way when you need to. So, I, I mean, all businesses are different, um, um, but with race strategy, it's um, it is a fascinating business. And um, there's probably people out there that are, that are playing on an Xbox or a PlayStation. You can do Formula One manager now who I'm sure know, know more than I do about running a Formula One race. And I, I still watch mystified through half of these races to try and work out what, how it works. Of course, what I do understand is, is um, how my series works. So every series has different regulations. Um, so I'm well aware of my shortcomings because I, I understand the area that I know. Um, so I think that's, that's quite crucial. Um, knowing the regulations that you're working in, um, I was, uh, I'm racing in a in a series of called it's called the Praga Cup, 
So it's a one make series of, of cars that are kind of like the Le Mans cars I used to race in the Le Mans series um, with some very quirky rules. Um, that you need to understand and and the devil is in the detail which i'm sure is something that's familiar for businesses um the rules change so we have to update those all the time and work out what it is um and you know in, in our situation we we strategize around the strengths of the drivers how much time they should be in the car when you put when you're going to do the fuel when you're going to do the tires um all those things sort of come together but it, it does again come down to um how to make the most of your equipment and the people um through that period of time so the strategy side, I think it, it is interesting and in how you exploit um, the opposition, the enemy, whatever you want to call them, um, respectfully, of, of course. But you're looking for the weaknesses in, in the people you're competing with so that you can build your strategy in a way that exploits that, um, as well as to make the absolute best of your performance, as well as, you know, we'll, we'll look at different tracks, for instance, and pit lanes will be a different length, you know. So even though the rules haven't changed, the environment is different and you you realize that it takes longer to get down the pit lane in one one track say donnington than another at silverstone um and um you allocate your your resources around that and and stay flexible so um it's an interesting one you know working with regulations and strategy it's uh, it's always changeable uh, so i i mean the takeaway from my talks i hope people feel inspired um i've been inspired by everybody i've ever worked with um i you know Every day at work is a, another school day. I'm always learning. Um, I've had some fantastic experiences. I've met some amazing people. They're amazing because they are generally incredibly driven. So particularly the Top Gear um, uh, life, teaching all the celebs from Tom Cruise to Cameron Diaz and, and everyone in between, Lionel Richie, Jimmy Carr, the lunatic. Uh, you know, they, they were all very different. You know, I've never met anyone like Tom Cruise before. So, he, you know, this unbelievably driven man. The producers were terrified that he was going to uh, their, their insurance cover was going to be broken in half if anything happens. Um, they actually weren't very keen for me to keep teaching him to go faster. They were sort of saying, you know, he's going fast enough. But um, we kept on because he, he was just he absolutely was so determined. And I did teach him to sort of slice an apex, which he did. And the car nearly tipped over. They were absolutely bricking it, um, you know, behind me, the, all the people in, in sort of running the shoot. And um, he was incredible. He was still teasing the throttle when the car was midair, um, crossed the line and took the fastest lap. So those sort of things, you know, they are quite specific, but uh, they are inspiring. And, and um, you know, the one, I suppose, the most inspiring story I do tell um, is of a, of a chap who came to the track to try and set the fastest time in the reasonably priced car. Um, but he was blind. Um, I'll always remember that amongst many stories of, you know, people that I've met um, who who were able to achieve something you thought was unbelievable. But Billy Baxter, who couldn't see, I think he takes the biscuit. So um, that's one I definitely explore. And, and it's, uh, you know, the power of the mind, willpower um, and, and just finding extraordinary inner strength. So that's the story of Billy. So if I if I do meet you, I hope I'll tell you that story. That's a really interesting question, because um the way that content's been filmed has, has really changed. So even even while I was at Top Gear, um, the camera te tech was changing. So occasionally I would jump in the car and try and help the presenters by, you know, doing some good slides and make things look a bit tidier um, to go into their bits to camera. Um, but as the as the cameras improved, the quality, you could see through the windscreens a bit more. As a result, we had to start wearing wigs and I look ridiculous in a Clarkson wig, but there you go, that's such is life. It was, it was worth taking a hit for the team. So um, I, I thought the way that Top Gear was shot, the, the reason that it, one of the reasons that it's so watchable and repeatable, you know, you watch you watch these repeats on Dave and um, and and it's amazing how Top Gear it's been rebroadcast now. The original has now gone in America. It's back on BBC America. It's because it was it was shot beautifully by that camera team. That it was nearly always pretty much the same guys. Um, doing the, you know, every shoot we went on. They were the backbone of that. And um, many of them now are working on Clarkson's farm. God bless them. Uh, they all deserve knighthoods um, for patience and tolerance. So it was kind of timeless in a way, shot in a way that was beautiful. You, you your eyes, it, you could you could watch it again and again. And that's what I think is, is particularly true with movies like Bond. Um, everything's shot for real. There's no CGI. And it's, you know, it, the difference is, We'll accept something for TV and move on, you know, because you don't have as much resources. Not, there's not much money with which to shoot. You can't say, well, the sun's not popping out today, so we'll shoot it tomorrow. Whereas with movie making, 
they can be so precise because they they absolutely want a timeless shot. They've got um, you know some of the best directors of photography in the world, and unless they are one hundred percent happy that they, that they're achieving the 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 frame the beauty that they want to see, you know Ridley Scott, people like that, Michael Mann, um, you know the direct the guys that they've had on on the Bond movies, Christopher Nolan, you know, work with him on on Dark Knight Rises. You know, they're acutely aware of what they want to see in the in, in the end the output has to be a different level of quality so it takes longer to shoot basically is what i'm saying um uh, my first bond film taught me that it took three months to shoot less than two minutes of footage which is quite incredible so you, you get your head around that and you realize not only are you going to shoot top quality stuff but they're, they're going to cut out so they're going to filter to only bring out their best and to put that on show um, so I think that's the difference. It's, it takes a lot longer. The crews, there's way more people um, to, to manipulate all the all the equipment because there's different camera tech. We've got tracking cars, drones, again, lots more toys to film with. But it means that the moving circus is sort of 20 times bigger than television. Um, and then you go to YouTube world, which has been a big adjustment for me. And um, I find myself sticking GoPro cameras in, you know, which I wouldn't dream of touching anyone's equipment on a on a on a TV shoot, let alone a you know a movie shoot. Forget about it. Um, and on YouTube, you know, you you can you can stick a camera on something, catch something that's raw, and if it you know if it resonates with people, then it's worth running it. And, and that's what is amazing about YouTube. It's it's given people such an amazing ability to create. But um, but they all have their place, don't they? And um, but yeah, it's, and you mentioned streaming. Um, what that's just it's you just wonder how people have enough time to watch all this stuff but um, I'm a huge fan of, of the stream content you know currently smashing my way through Yellowstone and loving that uh, just wonderful series so yeah I guess um, it, it's it's been good and for people like me who, who do who work in these places and spaces it's uh, been a lot of fun so um, yeah the next adventure for me is is YouTube so having worked in television and movies um, I found the small screen now the mobile app and uh, so I've got my own channel, Ben Collins Drives, which has been wonderful fun um, going out, basically shooting whatever I want to go after. So I've been teaching celebrities some driving skills, had Dizzy Rascal on, who was amazing, um, and uh, been done a couple of exclusive launches. I've got another one um, coming up very soon um, for Praga, who've got something very special coming out. But um, I've been in America with Lucid. So, yeah, I've, I've been able to get my hands on um really incredible um, pieces of, of automotive technology right at the pinnacle as they're as they're being released and that's been fun um so yeah much more of that to do and still back into the racing as well so i'm racing again for praga and uh, look forward to continuing it so there's i suppose that in many ways um not much has changed but it's um but it's a new avenue so it's a new business and a, and a new thing to go after